said the fireman. I can hear something. In the distance was the whirring sound of Harold the helicopter. Thomas whistled again, and before long, Harold was hovering overhead. Evening, Thomas, he called. I'm on safety patrol because of the bad weather. You know, rescuing people and that sort of thing. It looks as if I'm needed here. Well, you can depend on me. Quack, said the duck. Quack what? asked Harold. The driver explained. If you can just go and rescue Donald's duck, he said, we can take care of her on the train. Easy, said Harold. But it wasn't easy. Every time Harold drew near to Donald's duck, the wind from the rotor blades blew her across the ice so that she couldn't hop on board. Wait, shouted Thomas. I've got an idea. Why don't you sort of blow her towards the riverbank? It was a very good idea. Harold carefully positioned himself and blew Donald's duck towards the side of the frozen river. Once there, she hopped onto Harold and was carried to where Thomas was waiting. Well done, Harold. Just doing my job, said Harold. The fireman and driver soon had Donald's duck warm and snug at the back of the cab. The wing is not badly hurt, said the fireman. You'll be as right as rain in a couple of days. Quack. I'd rather be as right as rain. Quack. Than as wrong as ice, quacked Donald's duck. When they returned to the shed, the fat controller gave his driver and fireman permission to take care of Donald's duck for a few days until she recovered. But first, he said, you must get some rest. You've all worked splendidly and helped us out of a difficult situation. I'll tell the others not to disturb you until you've had some sleep. But they had very little sleep that day. And for the next three days, Donald's duck would not stop talking. She talked about this and she talked about that, but she talked about nothing at all. She was having a quacking good time and she wanted everyone to know about it. All the engines and carriages liked her very much, but they were pleased when the ice melted and Donald's duck flew back to the river. In no time at all, spring had arrived. The fat controller told all the drivers, firemen and guards to sweep out the shed and to give the engines and carriages a good spring clean. The engines like spring, but look forward to summer most of all. Then, in no time at all, Summer arrived.